There's one major missing piece of the puzzle, and that's allowing the player to shoot our enemies. We're going to give our raptor an awesome fireball attack that will disintegrate enemies. Create a new scene and choose Animatable Body 2D as the root node. This is a physics node which can only be moved by script or animation, but doesn't have all the complexities of a character body 2D. Perfect for our flying projectile. Rename the root node to projectile and save the scene as projectile.tscn in the scenes folder. With the root node selected, change the collision layer to player or layer two and set the collision mask to both layer one and layer three. These are the environment layer and the enemy layer respectively. You'll be used to this process by now, but we're going to add an animated Sprite 2D to our scene and create a new Sprite Frames resource. As always, rename the default animation to Idle and add the Sprite Frames from the Projectile Idle Sprite Sheet. Remember to set the speed to 12fps and keep the loop option checked. Next, we'll create a new animation and call it Hit. Let's add the sprites from the projectile Hit sprite sheet. We'll set this to 12 FPS and uncheck the loop option. In the inspector, change the default animation to idle and check the playing option. We're also going to change the scale of the sprite here as by default it's a bit too big and won't look right when the player fires it if we keep it at this size. So let's change the transform scale value to 0.5 for both X and Y. Now add a collision shape to the projectile. We'll give it a rectangle shape resource with an X size of 60 and a Y size of 30. With the sprite and collision shape added, let's attach a script to the root projectile node and call it projectile and save it in the scripts folder. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that the projectile destroys itself after a couple of seconds. We do this because otherwise it may just continue flying forever. On the surface this doesn't seem like an issue, but eventually there could be hundreds of projectiles flying off screen which could start to impact the game's performance. It's an unlikely scenario, but one we can easily avoid anyway. Let's create a variable called death time and set its initial value to zero. Inside the ready function, we'll set the value of death time to be the current time, time.getTixMSec, plus 2000, which is in two seconds time. Inside the process function, we'll check to see if the current time is greater than or equal to the death time. If it is, we'll call Q3 to destroy the projectile. Next, let's add the physics process function. In it, we're going to want to constantly move the projectile right on the x-axis and check if it collided with anything. We'll do this by first defining a vector for the distance we want the bullet to travel this physics frame, which we'll say is vector2.right multiplied by a thousand and by the delta. Next, we'll call the move and collide function, passing in the distance vector. This function returns an object that contains information about any collisions that have occurred. If there is a collision, we'll call Q3 to destroy the projectile at the end of the frame. Then, we'll check to see if the collision body was an enemy, and if so, we'll call the die function. Currently, our enemy doesn't have a die function, so, just like we did with our player, we'll need to go and create one. Before we add the die function to our enemy script, let's open the enemy scene and add an audio stream player, and call it death sound. We'll drag in the enemy death.wav sound to the stream property. Now, inside the enemy script, let's grab a reference to the death sound node. Now we'll create the die function. Here, We'll play the death sound and the death animation. We'll also set the active variable to false. Finally, 
we'll connect to the sprite's animation finished signal. We do this so that we can wait for the enemy's death animation to finish before destroying it completely. Inside the onAnimationFinished function, we'll call Q3 to destroy the enemy node. It's time to add the final bits to let our player actually fire this dino killing fireball. Head over to the player scene and add a new audio stream player and call it Shoot Sound. Drag the player shoot.wav sound into the stream property. Next, we're going to add a node 2D to determine where exactly we should instantiate the projectile. Let's create one and call it Projectile Position. Using the Move tool, position it somewhere just in front of our raptor's mouth. Let's go over to the player script now and add a few references. We'll get a reference to both the shoot sound and the projectile position nodes, as well as the game node. We'll also get a reference to the projectile resource using the preload function like we did for our platforms in the game script. We're also going to add a variable to keep track of how much ammo our player has. We'll give this an initial value of 3. We're going to use the input function now to check to see if the player has pressed the fire button and if they have any ammo left. If so, we'll spawn an instance of the projectile at the projectile position, play the shoot sound and also play the shoot animation. Finally, we'll decrease the ammo count by 1. You'll notice here that we're using the global position property rather than the usual position property. This is because we want the current real position of this node within our game world and not its relative position. This ensures the projectile spawns in the correct place within our game. If we run the game now and press the fire button, which we set to left control, we can see that our player can fire three projectiles that fly across the screen. Also, you'll notice that if you hit an enemy with a fireball, they disintegrate into a lovely display of burning ash. Nice. But, there's a problem. Our player plays the shoot animation, and then, all animation stops. We'll fix that now. Back in the player script, inside the ready function, let's connect to the sprite's animation finished signal. Inside the handler, We'll check to see if the current animation is the shoot animation. If it is, we'll go back to playing the run animation. Rerunning the game now, you can see that once the shoot animation finishes, the player goes straight back into the normal running animation. Now that our player can shoot projectiles, we need to give them a way to be able to shoot more than just three. We'll do that by adding a golden insect collectible that will give them more ammo. To make life easy for ourselves, let's duplicate our collectible scene and call it Ammo Collectible. Open it up and inside the animated Sprite 2D Sprite Frames resource, let's delete all of the frames for the idle animation by hitting the trash can icon a few times and replace them with the frames from the Ammo Collectible idle. We'll do the same for the collected animation, delete the existing frames and replace them with the ones from the Ammo Collectible Collected Sprite Sheet. We'll also add an audio stream player node, call it Pickup Sound and drag in the Collect Ammo Sound to the stream property. Next, we're going to duplicate the collectible.gd script and call it ammocollectible.gd instead. Now, drag this script onto the root collectible node to replace the attached script with the one we've just created. Let's open up the ammo collectible script and make a couple of small changes. First, we'll change the value variable's default value to 3. 
Then we'll grab a reference to the pickup sound node, as well as swap out the references to the game node for a reference to the player node. Next, we'll change the line that says game.addScoreValue to player.addAmmoValue, and then play the pickup sound. The only thing left to do to make it work is to add the addAmmo function to our player script. So let's open up the player script and create an addAmmo function. The function will take a single parameter called amount. Inside, we'll increase the ammo variable by the amount variable. There's two things left to do to finish our ammo collectible. The first is to create the ammo label so that we can see how many projectiles our player can still fire, and the second is to create a new platform with our golden ammo collectible that our player can collect. Let's tackle the UI element first. Open up the main scene in the 2D viewport. Duplicate the score label and call it ammo. Give it a default text value of ammo 0, and then move it down slightly so it sits beneath the score label. Next, head over to the game script and grab a reference to the ammo label. Scroll down to the process function, and right underneath where we update the score label, let's also update the ammo label. We'll use string formatting in exactly the same way, only this time we'll pass in the player.ammo variable instead. Playing the game now, we can see that our ammo counter is working correctly. It displays 3 ammo to start with, and for each fireball our player shoots, the counter decreases by 1. The only thing left to do for the ammo feature is to add a new platform to the game for the ammo collectible. Let's duplicate the original platform scene and call it Platform Collectible Ammo. Open it up and drag an instance of our ammo collectible scene into it. You can position and resize it however you like. I'll keep it near the middle of the platform and give it a scale of 0.6. Now, let's go into our game script, grab a reference to the new platform, and add it to the platform's array in our spawn code. Let's test out the game and see it in action. Awesome! 